fixed rotor, floating rotor, which one's better? Why would you use one or the other? That's what we're here to talk about today. I'm Morgan from Highland Cycles. We are here to talk about brake rotors. I know a lot of you guys probably don't care that much. Maybe you care a ton. I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting. Let's dive in. All right, guys. So most bikes these days come with a fixed rotor. Now you Yamaha guys are going to jump in here and start yelling about how awesome YZs these are because they've been coming with floating rotors for a long time. You're right. I love YZs. <laughs> YZs are awesome in lots and lots of ways. That's just one of them. But most bikes are coming with a fixed rotor just like this. It's one piece of steel, stamped, laser cut, machined, however it's built, but they're one piece of steel like that. They are great. They're relatively inexpensive. Uh, there's no moving parts. It's just a piece of steel and they work really well. They're usually pretty darn strong uh, if they do hit things. So I do like them, but there is some limitation. If you think about your bike, let's take a look here. Every part on this motorcycle is made to within a certain tolerance. Uh, machined parts are usually a lot tighter tolerance, you know, one or two thousandths. Cast parts are a little bit more, um, you know, soft parts like seats and plastics are a lot more. Um, so from up here at the brake master cylinder, all the way down to the caliper, there are quite a few parts involved that all have tolerances. Uh, caliper has tolerances. The fork leg holder has tolerances. The caliper carrier has tolerances. <coughs> the hose and connect banjo bolts have tolerances. Anyway, everywhere it attaches, it, they're all tolerances there. And so when Hans and Franz are building these things in <laughs> Europe or um, guys in Japan or wherever, they, or sadly China, <laughs> there are differences in parts across the board. That's the way it is. A fixed rotor is locked into being in one spot. So when it bolts up here, it goes in between the pads here and it is locked there, right? It can't really move other than its flex. So when you squeeze up there, it brings these pads together. Boop, it squeezes those in. Those are going to hit at, here, let's go over here and take a look. So if we're looking at like head on, we've got the rotor like that. And then we have brake pads. And they are being pushed in by pistons. And they're held in the caliper. Now, the thing is, when these squeeze, sometimes if this isn't exactly in the middle, it's gonna push a little bit more from this side or a little bit more from this side. There's gonna be a little tension on it. It's gonna to wanna to push back on the piston, all that good stuff. So it's not perfect, right? And that's okay. They work pretty darn well, just like that. But if you can get a floating rotor, like this beautiful one from our friends at Intech, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous, the rotor is floating on these, um, the rotor blade, the rotor carrier, and these buttons is the best way I can describe them. And while you can't sit there and like, you can't really feel them moving, it does allow the rotor to move and it allows it to conform in between the pads dead center every time. Uh, even if you ding it a little bit or anything like that, it wants to stay straight and it gives you a better connection between the pads and the rotor. Uh, the downsides to these is cost, right? They're quite a bit more money because there's a lot more going on here. Also, there are moving parts. They do wear. These buttons will eventually wear and this thing will start to kind of jiggle and wiggle and you'll have to get a new one. If you've ever owned a YZ, you know that's how that goes. Uh, when they start to wear, you can start to feel it as you're pushing the bike around. You can grab the, the front brake and you can feel it go kunk, kunk. It almost feels like the steering head bearings are loose, but it's actually this rotor moving on the uh, buttons so they do wear out there is a downside there but the braking is way more positive way more sensitive and i'm really excited to install this thing and check it out on this bike so guys short video hope you guys like it 
Um, hope that helps explain the difference between floating and fixed uh, brake rotors. There's nothing wrong with either of them. They both are awesome. Uh, it's just that I think performance wise, you're getting a better brake, um, you're getting better brake performance with a floating rotor. And like I said, I'm super excited to try this thing out. Um, let me just, let's mount it up and see what it looks like. If possible guys, you always want to use new uh, brake rotor bolts when you mount them up. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary, but it's a lot better. That way you don't have any kind of stress cracking or anything like that. It might cause one to come loose. I like these from the company, the Bolt Company. They already come with Loctite on them. So we'll just run these suckers in here. Always start them by hand. Now, I'm gonna use a gun to get them down in there a little ways. Then we're gonna grab the torque wrench. Eight foot pounds. There we go, guys. Looks awesome. Uh, and definitely can hear that. It's a very consistent sound uh, because it's just gonna stay right in the middle. Um, these are really cool rotors. They come with the spots for the magnet if you have a W with a Speedo. And it looks like there's two different ones. Um, they're, yeah. So you can see this one's closer in. This one's further out, so I'm guessing different manufacturers or different years or whatever might have a different place for the, the rotor or the magnet. So anyway, hope that's good, guys. Uh, make sure you comment below if you have any questions or if I missed something, if I screwed something up, let me know. Also, subscribe because we're here doing tons and tons of content on lots of dirt bikes. See you guys in the next one.